What do we know, everybody? We're here today with a John Deere 544D wheel loader. This thing is a classic, and it is a beast. It will dig, 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 dig. Not near as glamorous or as comfy as the new ones, but she does the job pretty good. And this one here is actually a backup. My thing was bought way back in the day. They went and upgraded to a new cat loader. New cat loader does better, I think, at loading their feed. But injection pump started wobbling around and ruined the holes in the front cover. So while that one's away in the shop, they pulled this guy out of the shed and they figured, well, been sitting a while, might as well do service on it. This thing, not much to look at, but it is a beast. So, like I said, this thing is a beast and it's kind of fun to look at it because there's a lot more room in here than there is on normal engines like this and these loaders you look at, but this is a pretty tiny guy. And you look in here, you see the little bitty injection pump, injector lines going really, really fun to look at. Then I come over here to the left side. This is where we're gonna be doing our work. You can see we got two oil filters here. And way back in here, I'll flip you around so you can actually see that a little better. So for starters, you can see there are two oil filters, same filter, pressure gauge. This is where you add your hydraulic fluid, where you add your oil, check your oil. And this box back here is your fuel filter. And that is not supposed to be black in there. The reason that that fuel filter is black, and I'm gonna open up the back here by the radiator. You can see down here where you add your fuel, 50 gallon tank. Well, when these things sit, algae grows. And I've seen it a lot in semis, um, see it in these loaders when they sit for a while and in tractors. Diesel engines in general, they start to grow algae. So where this one is set, it's not used, it's a backup, it gets run maybe a couple times a year algae started to grow so i added some stuff they call clear diesel it's by power service really good stuff use it in semis and stuff like this and i will kill the algae so put a new fuel filter on put that stuff in let it clear that algae out and run the stuff good every day run this thing about out of fuel change the fuel filter again so today I will not show you guys how to change a fuel filter just because we're clearing the system out and that's kind of just throwing money away at it because we've already replaced the fuel filter. We're going to keep letting it get full. When we get this thing about empty of fuel, I'll come back, change the fuel filter again, and then we should be good to go. But let's get started. So one nice thing about the newer cats and John Deere loaders is now in here somewhere there's a valve you turn the valve it runs out of hose at the bottom of this well this older style they don't have that this 544d doesn't have that but they do have this this guy right here that guy right there is how you drain your oil it's on the left side right behind this rear axle doesn't look like an oil drain but by george that is what it is all right, so I got my bucket there. Should be five-ish gallons of oil in here, if I'm correct. This is a 3 8 Allen head, hex head. Oh, that boy is tough. Okay, got her broke free, and it took both hands to do it. I think they said it's been maybe two or three years since they've changed the oil on this thing, so you can imagine... You can imagine how uh, stiff that was. There we go. And that is going to take a while. And I don't really know how much oil was in here because I didn't check it. So we'll just let that kind of creep out of there and drain. And I think it would be worth noting that it is in the low 30s here today. And it's really foggy and chilly. Yesterday it was 40 something, and next week's supposed to be like 50 something, but <sighs> is what is. 
do this keep customers happy even if it is on days like this this ain't bad um if i was thinking ahead i probably should have had them run this till i got here but that's my fault so the more you know but let that drain and i'm gonna get over here and get my stuff together and we'll start taking some filters off once that drains down a bit okay the fun part of this filters always wonders what kind of filters you need I don't go on this stuff and buy John Deere filters. Um, waste of money, expensive in my opinion. What it has on here are Fleet Guard. You can see the number LF678. Fleet Guard are good filters. I like Fleet Guard. On some of this older stuff though, I find the Fleet Guard doesn't do near as good. It doesn't seal up near as good. And honestly here lately, I've really been loving these wicks. This is number 51243. Needs two of these on here. I've had really, really good luck with these. I mean, people will say what they want about either of them. Some people swear by Fleet Guard. Some people swear, swear by Wix. Some people hate them both. Some people love Baldwin. I'm not on that Baldwin bandwagon. Been there, done that. Didn't like them. Didn't have good luck with them in the semis. But it is what it is. But these Wix ones, I've been having really, really good luck with. So, figured I'd give you the two numbers here. The Fleet Guard number, LF678. Wix filter, 51243. Choose wisely. Oh, those boys have been on there for a minute. <sighs> Drop that in my bucket. <sighs> Grab the other one. Oh, that bastard. Tight. There we go. Now to clean that up. Try to use brake cleaners, what I use. It seems to work pretty good. We got a lot of years of oil and grime and dust and grease and everything on here. I don't exactly need to clean the top of this filter housing, but I do it just to be nice. Clean the gauge up that they'll never use. All for the sake of being nice. The main part of this that I need to clean is down below where the filter mates. Make sure that that is free of all dirt, grime, dust, grease, everything. That way we don't have any issues with leaks around the O-rings or anything getting into the system. And you can see pretty nasty stuff under there. But that's what you get when this stuff hasn't been done for a very long time. And I always say that every six months you should be changing your oil. At the very least, once every year. Whether you use it or not. There we go. I'll go around the threads. Make sure they're clean, free of everything. That should be good. Now, normally you don't have to pre-fill filters. They, some places even recommend against it. But, 
on the older stuff like this, I do pre-fill them a little bit. I don't fill them all the way, but I do put some oil in them. Now how I transport the oil to old jobs like this when I got an idea how much I'm going to need is 2.5 gallon jugs. Stuff that you'd get gear oil or something from the co-op in. Get them cleaned out nice and good and they work great. So if you can transport 2.5 gallons at a time, you can easily lift it, dump it into the funnel so you don't need a pump. And life is good. It's just kind of what I have to work with here. Just a simple, simple little deal. Okay, I've got both of my filters pre-lubed. And I've got the O-ring greased up. Got some oil running off the side. It doesn't really matter what side you start on. Now I'm going to start over here, make sure I don't hit it on anything on the way up. Get it started on the threads. Maybe. There she goes. So I'm just going to hand tighten it. Clean it up a little bit. Put the rag underneath of it. Make sure we get it tight. We'll go ahead and grab the other one. Clean it up a little bit. Make sure the ring's still lubed. that one off there we go got the oil filters on so one thing that I do when I go out to feed lots and farms and change oil and change filters on these things is I always write the date that the filter was changed and the hours that are on the equipment. And I use one of these. This is a paint marker that you can find in the welding section of virtually whatever store you're in. This one I think I actually got from Tractor Supply. And this one in particular can write over oily surfaces which is good for welders and is very good for me. But this one is white. I got black ones. Depends on what filter I'm using. Wix filters are generally black so this white one works really really well. But in this 544D John Deere loader, I'll show you where the hours are here. If you climb up in the cab and you look down over here, this far right gauge, it says quartz on it, there's your hours. 38253. 38253. So I'll take, I'll write the date that I changed these filters. Write the hours on it, 38253, and life will be good. That way, down the road, when they want to change their own oil, or if this has to go to a regular shop, go to somebody else, get sold, they know exactly when this filter was changed and how many hours it's had on it since that's been changed. And they can figure out, okay, it was changed on, like today is January 26th. And they only ran it so many hours from January 26th until this point. And you can kind of tell how long or how much it's been ran. See if they're full of it or not. So, kind of a handy little thing to do. Covers a lot of bases. Covers a lot of people. And they don't have to be calling me and figuring out when I changed oil. Because I always write all that stuff down anyway from my own personal records. And don't mind the poor handwriting. But you can see how well that shows up on that black. And once that dries, that'll stick around for quite some time. Now that we've got oil drained... Got the filters on, ready to go. See my filler neck over here. Got my funnel in it. Gonna go ahead and put five gallons of oil in and we will see kind of where we're at on the dipstick and go from there. And I'll come at you guys after I get that done. Well, we just got her filled with oil. Got about four gallons, four -ish gallons of really slow, thick oil out of it. So it's definitely been a minute. I'm kind of surprised that we got four gallons out of it, so they must have added some at some point. But 
Put five gallons in, that's exactly what the service manual says, five gallons including the filters. So let's fire it up, let her run, check for leaks. There you go it's that simple no leaks no problems pull the dipstick out everything is as it should be got a few things to clean up but you guys really don't want to watch that so i think i'm gonna end this here get stuff cleaned up and get on out of here so for those of you guys that enjoy watching my videos i love making them i thank you guys for those of you that stumbled upon this video because you want to know how to change the oil in this or how to drain the oil in it i'm glad you found my video as always, I thank you guys for watching.